Okay, today, today I'm I'm interviewing Sarah Stifler Lucas. Um, Sarah is a an elected artist at the Lyme Art Association, and I should introduce myself as well. I'm uh, Lori Pavlos. I'm the executive director at the Lyme Art Association, and Sarah has been a longtime member and elected artist, and she's uh, involved. She's very active in a number of the arts organizations in southeastern Connecticut and um, has been a professional artist for many years. And she has uh, graciously agreed to do this interview. Um, and it's our first time recording this, so uh, she's very brave. So um, Sarah, I just wanna say hi and thanks. Hi, I'm feeling very brave. Okay, <laughs> all right. So. What I want to do is we're going to look at the first image here uh, of a young Sarah. Um, Sarah, tell us about your subject matter. Okay. I have always been drawn to the human form and to portraiture. So almost all of my paintings include at least one figure or the implication that someone is about to appear on the scene. I have observed that most children start drawing a face when they start drawing. It's something that they know and see and understand and connect with. And for me, that connection and that attraction has continued throughout my career. Also, I love paintings uh, that have uh, patterns and shapes, unusual lighting, atmosphere, and the use of arbitrary color. Most of my paintings are narratives, and I try to express the peaceful side of humanity, the warmth and the light of a beach scene, the mystery and the romance of an evening street scene, the inviting coziness of a cafe interior. All these are scenes of harmony and scenes that have the connection of the figure in the setting. Okay, thank you. That's, you know, these are all things that you're saying are things I see when I look at your work. It's so clear that you're getting across the message that you're trying to. Well, here we have this lively uh, summer beach scene. Um, so can you tell me a little bit about your technique and your use of materials here? Yes, yes. I, I love this painting. This is, uh, the canvas is 36 by 36. And I prepare my canvases with a few layers of oil paint and I let it dry. And the oil paint can be, you know, anything. It doesn't specifically have to have anything to do with the painting that I'm going to paint next. I'm just want I want something that'll create an underlayer of texture and tone, and I think it gives more interest to the surface, and it often sets the the mood for the painting. I paint with oils, and I only use the primary colors in white. My favorites are alizarin crimson, yellow ochre, Prussian blue for their dark intensity. And I also use cadmium yellow, cadmium red, and ultramarine blue for my brighter paintings. All of the brushes I use are flats and brights. And <clears throat> I, I try to use a brush that feels a little too big for the area I'm painting. This helps the painting stay loose, and it allows for interesting brushwork. Um, the use of this limited palette allows me to create a wider range of colors that will all be related to each other. And I begin all my paintings with a monochromatic arrangement of lights and darks before I proceed with the color. And most of my work is done using photographs for reference. The, the self-portrait that you looked at before this, I did like all my self-portraits, standing, looking at a mirror with my easel right there. Thank you. So you, the, you can see the underpainting here and 
sometime we're going to have to have you come in and and show us because you can there's so many layers in this painting and uh sometime we'll have an in-person uh lecture to to uh help us understand all that goes through all that goes into this the uh the un the first layer that i let dry for this uh Sur la plage beach scene, um, it was uh, blue and orange. So it really looked like a spotty abstract, but that was my intention. And I applied it thickly with a palette knife to e enhance the textural element. Right. Okay, I'm going to look at the next one. Another beach scene with... Uh father holding two children. Yes, I, I always take my camera to the beach. And this man uh, had these darling little girls. I, I asked him if it would be all right if I photographed them and they romped around. And I got some photographs that were so-so. Um, and I, I told him, I said, you really are great. Uh, obviously, you're, you're giving your wife a break, taking these, your children to the beach. He said, yes, she, she just came home from the hospital with another set of twins. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> then he picked the little girls up and started going into the water, and I thought, that's, that's, the, that's the picture I want. So, that's great. Yes. I love that. So are there, are there any pieces that you've held on to for your own collection? I mean, obviously, your, your self-portrait from the beginning, it, you, do you have that one? That's yours still, right? Are there any I, other? Uh, yes, yes, and almost all of the ones that I've kept have been portraits of my family and some of my self-portraits. And there's one that I did in my port of my partner, Tim, in bed reading the Sunday funnies with our older grandson, and I find it especially touching and personal. Um, and I must say, everybody who looks at it feels the same way. Everybody who's a parent or has a family looking at the connection that I really tried to get between Sasha and Tim there. I just, it, it, it made me very pleased. But yeah. um, I do feel that when a painting sells, it completes, or at least it continues its journey. Yeah, that's a beautiful painting. Uh, it's so the relationship between the two and the comfort is is uh, so apparent. Thank you, and you can see too. This is one of the very few paintings that I have done in which I did not paint the canvas a color. It's more. It's done right on the um, white gessoed canvas, intentionally, almost colored drawing or a monochromatic drawing uh, of them with a lot of the um, looseness uh, of brushwork in the lower section of the canvas and a lot of the original gessoed canvas showing through. Right. Let's see what's next. Oh, here's this uh, street scene. Looks like New York. Yes. And... Um, I, I didn't stand on the sidewalk at night painting. I was using uh, photographic references that I'd taken um, when I was in New York, and um, I love I, I love creating the the dramatic depth of field with the diagonals of the buildings coming down into the vanishing point and the and the and the street going back to that vanishing point. All these angles that I find very um, a much a balance and an anchor for the action. It's like I'm creating a stage set. Right. I, and there's, your nocturnes often have a figure that feels comfortable in that scene. I find uh, that's, that's something that's usually present in, in, uh, in your nocturnes, it's just um, they're comfortable. They're they're often there's sometimes uh, people together, two people comfortably walking together. Uh, it's a it's a 
uh, sense of warmth, even though it's a nighttime scene. It's nice. Thank you. It's important to me to to make those statements. I I um, am I really am only interested in in painting something that's going to make you feel uh, good. No anguish or angst in my paintings. The connection of the figures. Or, or the or the solitary figure. Even um, I'm never. I'm not trying to imply the figure is is lonely. I'm I'm just saying here's a solitary figure uh, content in the in the in the in the solo journey of the evening. Right, right. Well, that's uh, that's what I would say too. So I'm you're successful. It, I, I came. I thought of that on my own, thinking of this painting and and another one that's in in uh, nighttime and as a solitary figure. They just seem secure in their in their um, in their being alone. It's fine. And uh, yeah, here's okay. Let's see. Here's a um, a bar scene. Uh, mm -hmm. Here we go from one person in the evening to a whole lot of people. Yep. Tell me about this one. How big is this? This looks like a small piece. And this is the um, the bluish one. This is right. Uh, the bartender behind the bar. Uh, and this, yeah, that actually, that I took photographs at a place called Clyde's in Georgetown, D.C. Um, when Tim and I were down there, he was showing me his old haunts uh, from when he was there, mm -hmm. and um, I. It, it has it has that stage set look that I like so much with the diagonals, the verticals, the horizontals that ground the figures. And I can take pictures at the bar, and and you know, not too many people notice <laughs> or care. Right. And I I try to make them look as interesting as possible when I paint them, and. Um, it's my hope that when the viewer looks at the scene, the viewer will feel, oh, a connection. I was there. I want to be there. That looks like a friend of mine. Um, that sort of inner reaction uh, is what I, I love when people will look at my piece and connect with it. Right. Okay. And then the... the um, yes. So how how large is this painting? That one is, um, I think it's a 9 by 12. Okay. Thank you. Oh, here's another one. It's a bar scene as well. It says bar on the windows. And here's an example of one where there are no figures in the scene. Yep. The figure, the implied figure, the figure is about to come and maybe play, sit down at the table or play the piano over there by the window, that little, that upright piano. Right. It's a photograph that was taken at um, Bunratty Castle in, in, in Ireland. And um, in fact, one of my students had taken the picture and she gave it to me. And uh, I said, oh, you're right. This is something that I would love to use in a painting. Right, right. And the warmth of the light in there, um, it, it's, again, it, it's a sense of, yeah, like you said, someone's about to come in. This is someplace you'd like to be. Mm -hmm. You can sit there on the bench. Yeah. All right. And the next one is the last one, I think, is um, there's lots of red in this one, a carafe and two wine glasses. I, I took pictures in the Zach's restaurant in uh, Stonington Borough. Uh, so I've kind of got all sorts of things going on here. I've got the people, and I've got the still life with the carafe and the, uh, the carafe and the wine glasses. And there's a lot of textural buildup. This one is 14 by 11. And the, the very blurry... Uh, blurry edges of the people, and yeah, I think that makes it look cozier, and it also makes it implies some movement when the edges are soft like that. Right. Right. Well, I'd like to go there, have a glass of wine. So. Good idea. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, Sarah, thank you so much for uh, 
looking at some of your your paintings. I know people look at them and and um, I think that what you've added to our enjoyment of them is is going to be really I think people are going to enjoy hearing about them. And you and and to know that the intention that you have to make people feel good, make people want to be in a scene or know that the people in the scene are enjoying themselves and are and are uh, companionable, comfortable. Uh, I think that's that's pretty neat that you you're this is intentional. You're doing this on purpose and you're doing a great job at it. So um, I thank you again for uh, talking to us about your work. Thank you. And I wanted to uh, say a little bit too about the evolution of my work. If you've got still have time. Um, because all, all of us as artists evolve, and we owe it to ourselves to evolve and to keep growing and learning and building. And I was thinking that I could really answer the question about evolution in our, my process with four words, more paint and less detail. But, mm-hmm. but I've been painting and drawing since childhood, and I've painted many different subjects. And I've gone from tight realism to varying degrees of impressionism. And I think it has to do with a shedding of the superfluous and a focus on a few fewer elements, sort of a fine tuning of my work. And I find that the more I paint, the more familiar I am with the materials and the freer I can be. And I'm constantly looking ahead, searching for a fresh, a fresh way to make a statement so I don't repeat myself, even if I'm repeating subject matter, repeating a figure, the love of a figure, the love of an interior, a street scene, I want to give you a new thought, like a, instead of seeing the same, instead of me showing the same thing again, again. But I think you can see the, the connection and the evolution in, from one piece to the other in this work, and I hope that you always will. Well, thank you very much, Sarah. I've really enjoyed talking to you. And I uh, look forward to uh, a time we can all get back together. Right now, we're, we're uh, sort of in, in uh, stay-at-home mode in the, during the coronavirus. And uh, I know this interview will be out there for a while. So, um, uh, I look forward to seeing you back at the Lyme Art Association, and I invite anybody who's taking a look at this, um, come to the Lyme Art Association and uh, see some of Sarah's work in person. That's a great idea. There's so much to see. Thank you, Sarah. Bye for now. Thank you. Bye-bye.